We pause now for station identification. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. Tonight's play gave the language a new word for an old dream. The word is Shangri-La, the name of the beautiful far country in James Hilton's novel, Lost Horizon. And the dream is man's eternal vision of a land completely civilized, peaceful and free. High in the rugged mountains of Tibet lies Shangri-La, a world apart from war and rumors of war. Whole centuries ahead of its time. <laughs> but. Even the best of all possible worlds must have people, and people will always be human. That's what makes Mr. Hilton's magnificent adventure tale a fine human drama, and a story of a very human love, too. If you saw Lost Horizon on the screen, you wouldn't picture anyone else but Ronald Coleman in the starring role, and neither could we. The curtain rises on the third act of Lost Horizon. Once again, as his friend Rutherford listens intently, Conway takes up the thread of his narrative. Dawn is breaking over the calm Pacific. Conway's voice is low, keyed to the tune of another world, the peaceful world of Shangri-La. I learned one of the secrets of Shangri-La that night to preserve for all time the transient and perishable beauties of the world, to store them at Shangri-La, and keep them safe against the brutalities and ravages of war, a heritage to cherish and bequeath. Then when the strong had devoured each other, the Christian ethic might at last be fulfilled and the meek might inherit the earth. So, with the valley's gold, they purchased art treasures from Europe and Asia. They filled the library with the great literature of all the ages. Then, later on, it was decided to admit travelers and strangers who had lost their way. Strangers who had lost their way. Strangers might come as freely as they wished, but with one important proviso. Perhaps you are wondering, my dear Conway, what that proviso may be. I think I can already guess. We are to stay here. All of our lives. Mm. 